Originally created in 1976, Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, was a traveling space cop, but this was retconned into having taken place in an alternate future. So instead, the mainstream Earth-616 Star-Lord from the comics is the half-human son of the alien Jason, the ruler of the Spartax Empire. For years, Peter traveled around the galaxy as a rogue space pirate and mercenary who did good wherever he could. But after having to destroy a mining colony in order to save the lives of millions, Star-Lord turned himself into the cops and was set to spend the rest of his life repenting his crimes. That is, until a powerful invading force called the Annihilation Wave swept through the galaxy, causing Peter to act as the second-in-command for the resistance movement called the United Front. Immediately after the wave was defeated, a new war started against an invading techno-organic race called the Phalanx, which was led by the villainous Ultron. Peter was forced to lead a special task force in this war, leading to the creation of the Guardians of the Galaxy, a galactic peacekeeping organization made up of mostly Star-Lord's allies from the back-to-back -back wars. With his special element gun, piloting skills, and charisma, Peter has led the Guardians time and time again through several missions, saving the galaxy multiple times in the process. However, Star-Lord is also known to embark on his own solo missions of thievery, the profits of which he uses to help fund orphanages all around the galaxy. He's gone under several changes over time, but with the popularity of the Guardians movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it looks like Star-Lord has finally become a stable character, who will continue to be a major player in the comics for years to come. Much like Star-Lord, Rocket Raccoon was a character that originally appeared in 1976, but was relegated to an alternate future. Unlike Quill, though, Rocket was brought into the main Marvel Comics universe much faster, having debuted in 1982 as the chief of security for a planet of mental patients. Rocket quickly gained a cult following and even managed to get his own four-issue miniseries in 1985. Not only that, but he made a handful of cameos and guest appearances before falling into relative obscurity. He would later be brought back to the forefront of comics as a member of Star-Lord's task force against the Phalanx, and as the chief strategist, engineer, pilot, tactician, and heavy weapons expert for the Guardians of the Galaxy. With his BFF Groot, Rocket mostly functions as comedic relief for the Guardians books, but don't let that sell him short. Since becoming relevant to audiences again, he's headlined several books, and even led the Guardians for the brief time that Star-Lord wasn't with the team. Not to mention that Rocket gets several cool points with me since I'm a massive tabletop gaming fan, and Rocket makes a pretty damn good Dungeon Master which he has proven time and time again. Without a doubt, Rocket is one of the most iconic members of the Guardians, being one of only three members to never have quit, the others being Star-Lord and his best friend, Groot. The original concept of this character dates all the way back to 1960, but despite being a totally different character from the lovable tree that we know today, it still laid the framework. The Groot that most of y'all are familiar with was created as a companion to Rocket Raccoon on Star-Lord's Anti-Phalanx Task Force. But despite being known for only being able to repeat I am Groot today, he actually used to be able to talk in complete sentences. Groot is a Flora Colossus from Planet X, and never really got along well with others, considering that he was a lot more peace-loving and got along better with the servant maintenance mammals rather than his fellow Colossi. In fact, he was exiled from his planet after freeing a human child that his people held prisoner, and he spent years impersonating the king of his people. This led to several hijinks that eventually got Groot paired up with his best friend Rocket Raccoon, and the two of them ended up with the Guardians, where Groot mostly serves as muscle with his massive size, strength, durability, shape-shifting, chlorokinesis, and his trademark ability to grow back from a single sliver of wood. Thanks to the movies, Groot has become the face of the Guardians, with him easily being the most merchandised. What else is there to say but, I. Am. Groot. Okay, so Drax is a weird character. Originally a human named Arthur Douglas, he was killed by the mad titan Thanos, but had his soul intercepted by the guy's dad on its way to passing into the afterlife. Thanos' father put Arthur's soul into a special body that he bioengineered himself that was specifically designed to destroy Thanos, and christened him as Drax the Destroyer. This version was extremely different from the form that you might know him in today, and even included the ability to fly and fire cosmic beams. Ultimately though, Drax proved to not be a very popular character and was killed off. 
He was later resurrected though, and was given a much larger body, as well as lower intelligence, causing both fans and writers alike to view him as a sort of Space Hulk. This new brutish version of Drax mostly served as muscle and comedic relief for a team called the Infinity Watch, which guarded the powerful Infinity Gems. After disbanding though, Drax went through another transformation, becoming the iconic version that he is today. Now favoring Twin Blades, Drax proved to be a valuable asset during the Annihilation Wave and Failing Swars, prompting Star-Lord to bring Drax in as a founding member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. He mostly plays a background role while most of the Guardians books focus on Star-Lord, but every so often Drax does get some time to shine. Hopefully we won't have to wait very long for him to get another solo series of his own. Just like Drax, Gamora is another character with a deeper history than you might know. Gamora is one of the last survivors of the Zen Wobari race, after they were slaughtered by a race of aliens called the Badoon. This is when Thanos stepped in and took Gamora under his wing as an adoptive daughter, genetically enhancing and training her to become the most dangerous woman in the galaxy. Thanos sent Gamora on a mission to get close to a man named Adam Warlock, who we'll get to in a moment, but in the process she developed feelings for him. Gamora ended up leaving her adoptive father's side when she discovered his plans for galactic-scale genocide and joined Warlock among several others including Drax on the Infinity Watch, but later left due to infighting. Gamora fell into relative obscurity like pretty much every other member of the Guardians until she joined up for fighting against the Phalanx Invasion and later the Guardians of the Galaxy, where she became Star-Lord's best friend. Now, Gamora has left and rejoined the Guardians pretty much more times than anyone else ever has. But despite her cold exterior, Gamora is one of the core members of the group, and will always come back to her adoptive family no matter how far she strays. As promised, let's talk about Adam Warlock. This dude is one of those old school comic characters with a crazy complicated history, but long story short, he's an artificial being created by super scientists to be the peak of human evolution but every so often Warlock goes into a cocoon in order to be rebirthed into stronger forms. As his name implies, Adam Warlock uses sort of magical powers that are kind of like a hybrid of actual magic and energy manipulation, but he used to have all sorts of other crazy powers as the protector of the Soul Infinity Gem. For a while, Adam took part in almost all of Marvel's cosmic adventures, and was even the founder slash leader of the Infinity Watch, which led him to several romantic encounters with Gamora. Not only that, but Warlock is also constantly at odds with an evil Afro-sporting future version of him called Adam Magus. This is also a recurring struggle in Adam's life, as he doesn't want to dip into the dark side and eventually become Magus himself. Warlock was a key player in the Phalanx invasion, which of course led him to become a founding member of the Guardians of the Galaxy immediately afterwards. It was with the team that Adam rekindled his friendship with Gamora, led a psychotic space cult, and even succumbed to the mage's personality, but got better. He was a major powerhouse on the Guardians, but left when the team disbanded after Star-Lord's apparent death, and he ultimately never rejoined. Phylavel is the half-Kree daughter of Captain Marvel, one of the greatest heroes on both Earth and the Kree homeworld, Hala. She's gone by several names over the years, such as when she briefly took up her father's role as Captain Marvel, but during the war against the Annihilation Wave, she came into the possession of the Quantum Bands, one of the most powerful weapons in the Marvel Universe. Using these bands, Phyla became the hero Quasar and wrecked serious shop during the Phalanx invasion, despite still adjusting to her new powers. This instantly got Quasar an invitation to be a founding member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but she never quite felt at home. Despite being a cosmic badass, Quasar didn't contribute much to the team, but did manage to rescue her girlfriend, Moondragon, from the entity known as Oblivion. In exchange, however, Phyla became Martyr, the Champion of Death. Now, despite obtaining this new identity and becoming even stronger because of it, Martyr was quickly killed off by Adam Warlock, who had succumbed to being Adam Magus. But it turns out that she was okay. That is, until she was actually killed by Thanos, only a few issues later. This hit the Guardians hard, as it was the first actual loss of a teammate that they ever had to deal with. Now we're finally at the last of the founding members. Mantis is the Celestial Madonna, meaning that she gave birth to a sort of Celestial Messiah. She's a writer's pet that her creator Steve Englehart shoved into almost every book that he wrote, even over companies that aren't Marvel. 
Mantis is an overly important character with empathetic powers, telepathy, the ability to see the future, pyrokinesis, and she's even a master martial artist. Honestly, the Englehart era of the character isn't that interesting, and almost all of her prior history was thrown out the window when she was a part of Star-Lord's task force during the Phalanx invasion. When Peter Quill had the idea about forming the Guardians of the Galaxy, he went to Mantis before anyone else. See, Star-Lord wanted the team assembled as fast as possible, so he had Mantis lightly brainwash everyone so that they would agree to come on board. Naturally, this eventually got out and severely fractured the team. Regardless, Mantis wasn't usually active in the field and served more like the team's counselor with her empathetic powers. Like many others, Mantis left when the team disbanded following Star-Lord's apparent death, but she still pops up from time to time. Vance Astro, aka Major Victory, is actually a member of the original Guardians of the Galaxy team in the far future, but came back in time and suffered from amnesia. The Guardians team that we're focusing on in this video found the guy on a block of ice, just like Captain America, which is fitting considering that he literally has the dude's shield from the future. Upon being discovered, Astro joined the team and was actually the one that inspired the Guardian's name. Despite his amnesia, Vance proved to be a valuable member of the team with his combat training and psychokinesis, but he pretty much vanished after leaving the team following Star-Lord's supposed death. However, if you still want a Vance fix, he can be seen kicking it over in the Guardians 3000 book with the rest of his original team. Fun fact though, this version of Vance is from an alternate future, but there's actually a version of him in the mainstream Marvel comics as the hero Justice, and he actually has a pretty long running history, so feel free to check that out as well. Bug is a thief from the microverse, a teeny tiny universe on a microscopic scale. Here, he was a member of a peacekeeping group called the Micronauts. He's a warrior acrobat with abilities similar to those of Spider-Man, including his own version of the Spider-Sense called the Danger Sense. Like many other characters, Bug fell into obscurity, but made his way back into the spotlight as a member of Star-Lord's task force during the Phalanx invasion. However, unlike many of those members, Bug was not invited to join the Guardians of the Galaxy as a first choice. In fact, he was only brought on board after many members of the team quit upon discovering that Star-Lord had Mantis slightly brainwash everyone. Despite being upset about not being one of the first picks, Bug stuck around until the team's first major disband and mostly served as comic relief due to his heavy infatuation with Mantis. I mean, they're both green with antennas, so that's just a match made in heaven right there. Starting the trend of Earth superheroes joining the Guardians, Jack Flagg is an often forgotten about character from the Captain America comics. He's your standard enhanced human with super strength, stamina, and durability, as well as a healing factor, thanks to being doused with the same chemicals that the villain Mr. Hyde uses to transform. He was sent to a prison in the Negative Zone because of his refusal to comply with the Superhuman Registration Act during the Superhuman Civil War, but was later freed by Star-Lord. Jack stuck around and joined the Guardians, mostly acting as the street man who constantly complains about cosmic stuff. Honestly, he really seemed like a filler character and didn't really do much, eventually leaving the Guardians and returning to Earth when the Superhuman Registration Act was repealed. Next up is Moondragon, who is actually the daughter of Drax the Destroyer. Heather Douglas was also attacked at the same time as her father, but Thanos' father actually rescued her and trained Heather on his homeworld of Titan. It's here that she gained psychic powers and became an avatar of the powerful Dragon of the Moon. Fun fact, Moon Dragon was also a candidate for being the Celestial Messiah, but that title fell onto her fellow guardian, Mantis. Moon Dragon was all over the place and served on the Infinity Watch with Drax, Gamora, and Adam Warlock, as well as being a recurring character in the Captain Marvel series where she became the lover of Phyla Vell, who we mentioned earlier. If you weren't able to tell, a lot of the Guardians have connections with each other way before the team was even formed. Moondragon helped out Phyla during the Phalanx invasion, but was killed by Ultron. However, Phyla rescued her from Oblivion, and she joined the Guardians of the Galaxy alongside her lover and father. However, almost immediately after joining up, Moondragon became the host of a dangerous alien parasite. She got better, and like many others, left the team after Star-Lord's supposed death but she currently works as a member of the Nowhere Corps, alongside other former Guardians, Mantis and Bug, along with some dude named Prism. This brings us to the modern era of the Guardians, which immediately started by bringing on a little guy you might have heard of, Iron Man. 
Now, I feel like I don't need to get much into his backstory, but Tony Stark was personally invited to join the Guardians of the Galaxy and stuck around for a while in his Model 45 Deep Space armor. In fact, during his time with the Guardians, Tony even hooked up with Gamora. Ultimately, Tony ended up going back to Earth and was really only there to give some much-needed publicity to the new Guardians series. This was because the first live-action movie for the team was right around the corner, and Marvel wanted the gang to have a better presence in the comics. I mean, who better to give a boost of interest than arguably the most popular character in the modern era of the Marvel Universe? Originally a character from the Spawn series over at Image Comics, Angela was given to Marvel as a gift after a lot of legal nonsense. All of her history with Spawn was scrapped, and Angela was reworked as a part of the Marvel Universe. This version of Angela was born as Aldrif, the long-lost daughter of Odin and the sister of Thor. Kidnapped by the Queen of Angels during a war with Asgard, Angela was raised in Heaven, a long-forgotten tenth realm along the Life Tree. Thanks to a bunch of cosmic shenanigans, Angela was able to leave Heaven and roam around space where she bumped into and fought the Guardians of the Galaxy. She officially joined the team a few issues later and really hit it off with fellow warrior woman Gamora. Angela ended up leaving to go on her own adventures, but has been known to team up with the Guardians from time to time, but always for a short stint. If you didn't already know, Agent Venom is Flash Thompson, a major Spider-Man fanboy who used to bully Peter Parker in high school. Flash eventually became a stand-up guy and joined the military, where he lost both of his legs. Flash was part of a military project that gave him the Venom symbiote, reforming his legs and becoming the super soldier Agent Venom. The dude went on several missions and adventures, but when Iron Man decided to leave the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Avengers placed Agent Venom on the team as a replacement and ambassador for Earth. Upon joining though, Flash lost the team pretty much instantly. When the Guardians eventually found Flash, the Venom symbiote was out of control, and once they got it contained, it latched onto pretty much every Guardian. This was all in an attempt to bring Flash and Venom to the home of the symbiotes, where Venom was more or less upgraded. Agent Venom served mostly as a background character on the Guardians, doing his own solo space adventures on the side. He left the team when they went to Earth in order to help out their friend Captain Marvel during the second superhuman civil war, opting to go back to life on Earth. Speaking of Captain Marvel, I've read the entire modern era of the Guardians of the Galaxy since the team was established in 2008, but despite only helping out every once in a while, the opening of some books like to classify her as a member of the team. I mean, yeah, she was useful in rescuing Star-Lord from being imprisoned by his father on the planet Spartax, but I'm quickly throwing her in this video on a technicality, and because some comic elitists are going to try to use this minor detail to prove that I'm not a real comic fan and a comic poser in the comments, just like on every other video that I've ever made. So, hey, Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat, is one of the most popular members of the X-Men, and she got into a long-distance space relationship with Star-Lord, until ultimately deciding to join up with the Guardians to be with her lover full-time. For a good while, most of the Guardians books focused on Peter and his relationship with Kitty, even going so far as to getting the two of them engaged. However, Quill was later elected as the president-slash-king of the Spartax Empire, and ended up neglecting his team, and more importantly, Kitty, in the process. In revenge, Kitty took up the mantle of Star-Lord to get Peter's attention, but in response, Quill had her thrown out with the trash. Needless to say, this severely hurt their relationship, leading to an on-and-off-again will-they-won't-they scenario. Ultimately, Peter gets the Star-Lord mantle back, the two of them break up, and Kitty leaves the team to go back with the X-Men. The last member to ever hop on the team is a very famous character, Ben Grimm, aka The Thing of Fantastic Four fame. Honestly, he's pretty much only on the team because Marvel decided to disband the Fantastic Four in a move that many people speculate was to try to stop promoting the Fantastic Four series in hopes that Fox would give the movie rights back to Marvel. Anyway. Thing didn't really do much on the team, except for serve as muscle and comedic relief, such as when he sort of got married to an alien that the team rescued from a Badoon concentration camp. Pretty quickly, the Guardians went to Earth to help out with the second superhuman civil war, and along with Agent Venom, Thing decided to stay planetside and picked up work for S.H.I.E.L.D. That brings us to the present, where the Guardians are back to their iconic five-member roster. 
I want to give a quick honorable mention to Cosmo, the psychic Russian space dog who has been a frequent ally to the Guardians of the Galaxy. And although he's never been an official member of the team, I personally like to consider Cosmo as a sort of honorary member. And if you like what you saw today, then I would really appreciate it if you went and took a look at our Patreon, so we can give you rewards for helping out us make this show more frequently and even higher quality. Be a badass like Yosh Flores, Bonnie Davies, Ashley Donson, and Billy Lewis. You can see even more names of our supporters down there in the description below. But if you want to learn more about the Guardians, then we have an entire playlist of all of our videos on the team. And we have actually done in-depth history videos that go obnoxiously deep for a lot of the characters we mentioned today. So I highly recommend checking those out. I put a lot of work into them and I think you'll enjoy them. Anyway, thank you for joining us and I hope to see you next time.